Hey, welcome back to Diabolic Shrimp, the least professional talk show on the internet. I'm your host, best-selling author, comic creator, and video game designer, Josh Grant. And uh, uh, today uh, we have our special guest. It's actually, we're kind of filming in a different way today, which is awesome. And so our special guest is actually already on here. Um, we have Mark Dotson. Mark, welcome to Diabolic Shrimp. Hey, how you doing, Josh? I am doing fantastic. Uh, uh, I, I told Mark already, uh, I released my zombie comic today, Another Zombie Apocalypse, and then hey. I get to talk to Mark Dotson. So it's like it's like Christmas all around. And, and Mark is Santa Claus here, or, or, or like I said, the drunk uncle that showed up. Or, or, or the drunk the drunk Santa Claus. Yeah. I think would be like. <laughs> the very true. I was like, Man, what do you very, want for Christmas? Right, right, Have good, some God. scotch. <laughs> so, right. As we just right. got like demonetized probably from like youtube <laughs> so well mark... no not butterscotch just scotch <laughs> you know? right and so well mark uh it's fantastic having you on for our audience uh our audience never gets to uh see you they might not be seeing you now they might just be hearing you but uh but mark uh, uh mark was uh in uh, he, uh mark did all sorts of wonderful parts uh uh he was in uh star wars like return of the jedi star wars uh uh the force uh, uh i almost said the force unleashed uh the force awakens uh oh, i he... like the, I like the Force uh, Force Unleashed. I like oh, that. I like that one too. He played Star yeah. Killer in the Force Unleashed. No, I'm just joking. And yeah, so, right. uh, <laughs> very solid source here, and then uh, uh, yeah, played all sorts of other parts, Gremlins. And so we're going to go into some of those parts with Mark today, uh, and kind of walk through uh, what I consider to be some of his more iconic roles, and then maybe some of his lesser known roles. As first up, uh, I guess the bit of trivia here, I was like. These are all according to me, so people can fight me in the comments if they disagree with my ordering. Because okay. we're gonna go from most <laughs> iconic to lesser known. Uh, there's about ten of them. So, uh, well, I so, hope you start with the one I would start with, or I'll tell you. The one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say like, well, it, it was a toss up for me, so it was a, it was a little bit of a battle between, of course, like the two. So, what would you say, Mark, would be your most <laughs> iconic? Well, that was safe. Let's, that was a lot safer. Well, Salacious Crumb. Yeah, there we go. I was like, we here we go. We have there's the picture of him. A uh, uh, good looking guy there, Salacious B. Crumb. And right, so, he's uh, very good looking. His mother says he's handsome. Yep. <laughs> so, and, so yes. first off, what is, what does the B stand for? It's like Salacious B. Crumb. I've never known. Like, do you know? <laughs> of course, I do. The B is for bread. <laughs> what? Okay, Salacious. Bread crumb. Bread. Oh, I, I, I actually, I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> I never, I never made that yeah. connection. I love that. I love that so much. So, uh, so we got to get the picture here with, uh, with Jabba. So, so there's Salacious and Jabba. <laughs> you had this iconic scene with Jabba and Leia in the, in the, in the uh, metal bikini. Everyone was like crushing on, on Leia. Right. And, but I was that kid right. that was like, that was like, look at that beautiful rat thing. I mean, I'm mean, just gorgeous. Right. <laughs> and so, so how did you, how did you go about bringing Salacious to life? Uh, what did you do to like, uh, for that sound? Uh, so uh, there again, I mean, Ben Burt brought Salacious to life. I, I went into, well, let's, let's start here. The first audition that I ever had was, was, um, character and I didn't get the part and the character, the, the character ended up being, um, E.T. So so I had a raccoon. I I don't know why. I, I, had <laughs> I a, love how I casually had a, you say that. I had a raccoon. I had a bait. Yeah. When I was getting ready to. So I had this. So before I moved up to L.A., I was walking past a pet shop and I mean, up to Marin. I was walking past a pet shop in the valley in Los Angeles. And I see this little baby raccoon and I'm like, oh, how adorable. And I went in and they let me hold him. And I'm thinking her actually they let me hold her and i'm thinking well you poor thing you don't want to live in la you want to go up to marin county what raccoon wants to live in los angeles <laughs> so so i bought her and i took her with me and her name was mabel and i took mabel up to marin and so it went out that that uh that ben wanted to know if there was anybody that had a raccoon that he could record <laughs> right and so it got back to me and i was like oh my god yeah mabel so ben comes over to my house he brings an old old a new with but nowadays a reel to reel a sony reel to reel and a beautiful mic and all that he shows me how to use it and he says uh whenever you can get her to do some chirping and some of her sounds i'm gonna leave this with you because she wouldn't do it while he was there she was shy and mike shy i guess he said, I'll leave it with you. Here's how you do it. Record her. So I was like, okay. 
well, I had this thing and I was like, well, you know what? I always played around doing voices. I'm going to show Ben that I can do some voices too. So when I took it back to him, I'm like, here you go. And I said, and at the end I did some voice. I hope you don't mind. I don't want to be presumptuous, but I did some impersonations and things. And he's like, oh no, that's great. So, so then he listened and he got back to me. He's like, you really, you're, you're pretty good. Like I, I, I could uh, maybe use you for some things and I'll be calling you. And I was like, okay. I'll audition and see. So the first thing I got called for was, and I didn't know what it was. And I told my friend uh, after the session, she was like, so what'd you do? And I said, I don't I, 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 he had me saying some kid's name and phone home or something. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, oh, I wonder what this is for. Cause everything's always a, a secret. Mm -hmm. Even if you're working on it, if they keep it a secret from what you're working on, they do. So um, when I went to the screening, because we used to screen everything, uh, the cat, the cast and crew, they would have screenings and even people like me from, you know, carpenters and we'd be invited. And so I went and I'm sitting there watching and all of a sudden the, this creature comes on. And he says, Elliot. And I went, <laughs> oh shit. That was, I go, that was the kid's name. <laughs> like, oh my God. I could have been that. You, know, <laughs> you don't want to be that ET was yeah. my childhood nightmare. So <laughs> oh, was it really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved ET. So anyway, um, so that's how it, and then he's like, after the screening, he was like, you know, what'd you think? I was like, oh, that's great. And he's like, yeah, I found this woman that had that voice. Cause when I was doing, it, he was like, it's not male. It's not female. It's androgynous kind of creature. And just, come up and just try some stuff. So I did, but, um, but anyway, he said, well, I'll still be calling you did some really good stuff and I'm going to be calling you <laughs> next time I got, I know I'm making this a long story, but then I, then I get a call and I go in and I'm at the studio that I had built, helped to build that I was a laborer on, uh, and at the Kerner company in San Rafael. And I walked in, I remember saying, Oh wow, this turned out beautiful. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, that's right. You were like a carpenter or something." I said, "No, I was an I was a um, um, what was I um, a laborer on this building." And I and I told him I carried the lumber in and the sawdust out, and yeah, it came out beautiful. He's like, "You hadn't gotten to see." It. I said, "No, because they took me out of here halfway through doing the finish work. They put me out there at the ranch, so I have not been back to see it finished." And he's and Ben was just very like, "Oh yeah, we love the facilities. You guys did a great job." Okay, so here's this character for you, another one that I didn't get, and uh, it it was the it was a uh, it was on paper. It was Admiral Akbar describing how they were going to blow up. The Death Star. Uh huh. And it was, and it, it's the scene where the hologram of the Death Star comes up and he's pointing out how, you know, and yeah. we'll do this and we'll do it and they'll find it. <laughs> and, and so I start to read it and it's kind of wordy and it was a big audition, big thing for me. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. I started shaking and I was just holding the script. There was no, no music stand to put it on. It was just, here's the script, hold it and just try some stuff. Here's the mic been standing there and i got so nervous i literally couldn't see the paper like my hand was shaking so bad i couldn't read it and i remember going oh my god and I, he, he goes what what's wrong i said i'm so nervous which might don't let him see you sweat but i was like there's no way to hide this yeah yeah I, like, I am so i'm so nervous i'm shaking so bad ben i can't i can't read the script <laughs> and he's like it was just relax it's no big deal and i remember thinking not you you the time I said, well, can I just do something to get these nerves out? And he said, yeah, go whatever you need to do. And he just kind of looking down at his board. And I walked away from the mic. I walked over and I took the paper. And I started going, here's a script right here. And he started going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I did that. I, and, uh, you know, and then <laughs> I, and then I, so I, I really, it, it worked. It got all that nervousness energy out. And I walked back over to the mic and I said, okay, I'm ready. And Ben said, no, hang on a minute. And he came out from behind his console and he said, give me the script. And I handed him the script. And honestly, when he turned around, I thought, man, I just totally blew it. Like I have totally offended Ben. He's going to say we're done for the day, but he didn't. He turned around because see, he, this is what he does. He, he's always listening. And he said, I've got a, uh, you know what you just did over there? And I said, 
what I was cackling and <laughs> and he said yeah he said I have a creature that that is going to be perfect for let's forget we're just going to forget about uh, Admiral Akbar let's do a bunch of that today and I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> he just made yeah, you as nervous as possible so so that you get right <laughs> that way we'll get something out of this guy but uh but yeah so then he said okay um this this creature is like part rat part bird and um <laughs> he kind of described him a little bit and and he said so i just want you to do that and i'm going to give you some i'm going to give you some direction and just respond you know do respond to the to the things and so he did. And it wasn't parts of the movie. It was things to get certain emotions in that voice. And we probably did about 20 minutes of cackles and things. And well, he, we didn't start with the cackles. He, he started with, OK, you're this you're the little creature I'm talking about. And you're out in the desert. You're going through the desert. You're trudging along and you see a big castle up ahead. Give me some sounds in that voice of you going through the desert. You know, so I think, yeah. <laughs> you know I, i'm gonna go on you know and, and say okay great and then and he said um now you, you 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 get under the door and you're in and there's a giant sleeping and um there's a piece of cheese on his table i want you to climb up on that table and get that cheese so i go uh, I, you know and, and i got it he goes okay you got the cheese now now uh run and hide so i did some sounds and then he he says, okay, now the giant woke up and he sees you and he's coming after you and you're scared. Run from him and scream. And that and that's why I did, ah, you know, and I'm yeah. screaming. And, and, ah, and then uh, <laughs> he says, okay, the giant caught you. I'll never forget this, these, these parts. The giant caught you and, and um, he's got you in his hand and he just took the cheese. He just took his cheese from you. Tell him in, in gibberish, just make something up in that voice in gibberish. Tell him you want to give you that cheese back. So I remember going, <laughs> which I tell people, I'm like, so the scene where, where I, where Salacious goes to the ceiling after R2's yeah. action in the butt, yeah. after getting C3PO's eyeball, um, what I'm really saying there, and I'm thinking to myself, so they would have that emotion and I'm sorry, everybody, but I have a sailor's mouth and I, I'm literally thinking to myself, give me back that fucking cheese is what I'm saying. <laughs> but when you see me yelling at him at R2, for, you know, in the movie, I'm like yelling at him for zapping me in the butt. But really, I'm telling the giant to give me back the cheese. <laughs> I really hope they put that in the, uh, you know, in the subtitles when they finally translate. I want to I just want to see I want to see the full like salacious movie where it's just like salacious goes on these adventures of like, you know, fighting a giant and stealing his cheese. And, and uh, well, well uh, you know, it's funny you say that because uh Kowakian monkey lizards are sadistic creatures and they like to the backstory they they love to see people hurt they make them laugh and so i always thought i'm like well that's so me because i've always loved slapstick comedy and i've i've wanted for years and i shouldn't say this now somebody will do it but i'll say it because i've never done it i always wanted to have like uh what was that mystery theater or whatever oh, the one mystery, with... science theater, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mystery science theater yeah i want i want salacious crumbs sitting there watching the three stooges like <laughs> like he would think that was the funny which i love the three stooges so um so yeah, yeah i just always kind of thought like like mo would be like Robert De Niro to you know <laughs> Salacious would think Mo Howard was the greatest actor of all time. So uh, you anyway, know, Mark, where we we just curled. set up we're setting up our new podcast now. It's like me and Salacious watch movies and we're just gonna <laughs> just, <laughs> just, like, just watch all these movies. Done. Yeah. It's uh, right. But uh it, well, all right. all right, so so like well so I'm curious, last question for Salacious then before we uh jump on. So I yeah, just... and then well and then let me say so oh, then Ben took well then Ben took that sound. And he obviously, he sweetened it, he thinned it, he pitched it up a little bit, he sped it up here and there. I can tell, like, for some of the laughs where he, where it's more choppy, he, he must have chopped uh, some of the, some of the tail off of the laugh. So, uh -huh. like, <laughs> you know, so that's why I say I, I was, I was blessed. I mean, it made me sound better than I am. And uh, thank you, Ben. <laughs> well, don't, every, don't worry. I was like, 
I was like, we're, we're putting your voice through a voice thing for, for the final version of this video. So you're just going to sound like salacious the entire video. So it's well, okay. So Matt Wood, my wife is an assistant. <laughs> so like, well, I, I, so I'm kind of curious for uh, uh, like, like which kind of came first, like the chicken or the egg though, in these, in these things, like, do they, uh, he kind of gave you a bit of a description. So they kind of had an idea of the creature, but like, did they give you like like some of the concept art? I mean, it was a little bit different then. They didn't have as much concept art or things. Or did like oh they had a, that... they had a lot. Oh, they did they? Lot okay. Of oh yeah. Like, for... It had already been shot, right? That voice oh, okay. that was one of the last things Ben did. It was I think I did that about thirty days before the before the okay. uh, release. Oh, uh, here's another one from my childhood, and this is actually um, uh, surprisingly actually. Uh, you know, I actually learned that you did Salacious later. I learned that you did uh, the Gremlins later. This is actually the role that that uh, my brother and I, when we were at Comic Con, were like, "Hey, that's the guy that played Teak of all the ones like of Salacious." I was like, "Oh, he did Salacious too." I was like, "So you played Teak in Ewoks, all right? You were the little yeah, kind of battle like, for Endor, yeah. Yep, but you were a little fuzzy guy that would go, and I used to do that as a kid all the time. I would be like, who." yo you know i would like try and make the noise right. all the time and so uh so like uh so here's teak from uh, ewoks battle of endor and uh, you can actually see mark there in the in the second picture behind teak controlling him riding on a dinosaur <laughs> so no it's true <laughs> and so what what was it what was it like getting to like uh what was it like getting to return to uh star wars and uh and how did you come up with such a unique sound for teak uh that one i did get to see they did show me teak okay and I got called back, and I believe Ian Bryce had 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 them bring me in. So Ian was a, was a, was a production assistant that went on to be a great producer, director, or producer. Um, you guys know his work: Private Ryan, uh, Speed, Twister, all the Transformer movies. That's Ian Bryce. We were friends in the early days. Ian started at Lucasfilm in L.A parking cars honest to gosh he, he started he was at the valet and they really liked him and he was a great guy he came over from england and uh, you know they, they did everything they could to keep him here with whatever they had to you know green cards and all that and uh he's a citizen he became a citizen thanks to lucasfilm u.s citizen and now ian's gone on to be an incredible producer um but yeah, Ian called me in for that. He was a production. He was in production on that. And it was cool. I got to go back and we did it at Kerner uh, over at the uh, in San Rafael. And I went in and they showed me the stuff. And, you know, I have that Ewok thing in my voice anyway. So <laughs> I had, they, they knew I could. Yeah, I didn't. You know, it's. But yeah, it's uh, it was fun. It was fun. It was it's always fun to to know they liked what you did enough to bring you back. That's always good because, you know, got a lot of people to choose from. Um, but yeah, it was fun. And I also did a lot. Of, I never, I never really mentioned it. I did a lot of the giants voices in that too. Mm -hmm. Well, they I actually hear, had, I hear uh, tell actually, uh, you, you also played uh, several of the Ewoks as well. Yeah. I'm background Ewoks in it and antique. And uh, yeah, that was, it's it's all been amazing it's all been amazing uh it's surreal when when you see yourself and something that you were a part of and then when you go see it it's just it's surreal that's it's like that's not really me <laughs> yeah it is yeah it, it is well uh, but it was it was fun it was fun and they brought in uh some um some of the guys that were the giants were actually big guy I mean, they were huge guys and i remember them they they when i ended up doing they were like you want to try some of the giant boys and i didn't i was going deeper than they were you know like <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, then, and i remember one of the guys was like damn where does that come from like you're this little guy and we're like almost seven feet tall and we can't even get that low. i'm like i don't know i don't really know it, it comes from loving paul freeze like because he had a great deep voice and i always tried to impersonate him so probably stretched my vocal cords 
at an early age. <laughs> you just have that deep, like, inner anger about cheese, right? You're like, give me your cheese, <laughs> It's you all know? about so, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're just going to make a movie about a giant with cheese and uh, it's cheese. delicious. So. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, so so going back to your old stomping grounds here, uh, uh, you in Star Wars: The Force Awakens, you played Prashi or Prashi, and uh, no, that's a misprint. I played Cretinus. Oh no, okay. Well, I know good. where Thanks you for read that. <laughs> yeah, no, they need to correct that. Uh, I'm Cretinus, which is Prashi's uh, twin like brother, companion, which is yeah. how they got. Which is ironic that they got it wrong because the backstory is they're swindlers. <laughs> and they use the fact that they are identical twins <laughs> to like their, throw them off. <laughs> yeah, like like I make you a promise and then I walk away and then my brother comes in and they're like, okay, we're gonna do these no or not. And they're like, Well, you said this. No, I didn't. I never said that. <laughs> and they never let them know that they are twins. So they're that's so I thought how ironic that they got this wrong. You yeah. know that no, I'm not Prashi. I'm Cretinus. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they did that on purpose. That that's what the, that's what we'll it, say, right? <laughs> right, right. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> well, so what was it like coming back to again coming back to uh, Star Wars? All those all all these years later, like what was like, I guess what was kind of different in the process of uh, of like recording that that part was it was it different or was it just like it, uh, it, like it used to be? No, it was completely different because um, with the, in the the early stuff that I did it was just me and I did it wild. I didn't do it to picture for salacious. Right now, gremlins, we did the picture uh -huh. and I was there and Frank was there and how he was there and gremlins too. We were all there. We weren't on the first one. Um, we were there and we did it to picture. So, but the, but, but, the, but, but doing the, um, uh, forced awakens, I was really fortunate. I was in the studio, the ADR stage, uh, 20th century Fox, I think, and um, with everybody, with all the all the all the voice actors that were doing, and there was like fifteen of us um, for a Walla session, is what they call it, where you go in and put voice to all the characters that don't have voice, and you do it to picture, and it, a lot of background sound, and it's called a Walla session because if you don't know, if you can't come up with anything to say, if you just say Walla. <laughs> For some reason, for some reason, in the in the sound recording, it sounds like people are talking. So they be like, that was that was yeah, in stage so, in stage in stage acting. Actually, if you talked on the phone and you were in the background, but you didn't make any noise, it was peas and carrots. So walla and for, carrots. walla for film, peas, and then peas and carrots. <laughs> peas and carrots. 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 Yeah, walla, 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 walla. walla. <laughs> yeah, and, and you've got several talking to each other. Because it's a it's a full room of whatever a restaurant. Because I know people don't realize it, but like they where they use extras, or the, the where the actors are extras, it saves the studio a lot of money to have the extras not say a word, right? They're just they're moving their mouths, but they're not saying anything. Yeah, that way they, they don't have to pay on for pay for the words. As, yeah, <laughs> as a day player, as an actor, as a day player, right? They get to pay. It's really a low pay for what used to be called extras now i think they call them atmospheric personnel oh interesting <laughs> but um so then they bring us they bring voice but then they bring one voice guy or 15 voice people to come in and do the voices of hundreds of people hundreds of background there might be some close-up stuff like or tennis where they're like mark and that was really cool because matt wood brought me in for that and matt wanted the laugh he wanted the salacious crumb laugh because Gratinus they go into Maz's and they're playing the game and he goes, <laughs> and, and that's what, and, and when we were doing it, it, it was quite emotional for me because when that scene came up and we always watch a scene and then you go, okay, what are we going to do with that? So when that came up and I saw him laugh, I thought, Oh, I want to give him the laugh. And Matt looked right over at me, goes salacious. We need your laugh right yeah. here. <laughs> I was like, Oh my gosh. And I got shy for a minute because I don't know. I just and I was in there with all these really accomplished voice actors, young actors of today. And when I did it, after I did it, they all stood up and applauded me. And I, oh, could not. That I was, love that. I love that. that because, it was really beautiful. Well, that's just fun yeah. getting to, uh, you know, it's like getting to revisit that. And uh, and like I said, you you really do a fantastic job. It's so, <laughs> like I would I for you now. Now I'm curious. Like, uh, did did you ever get a chance? Because uh, I know in some of the newer Star Wars, they wanted to 
like uh, bring people like onto the sets. Did you ever get a chance to go onto the sets for for any of those? No, I never did. I never have. And I'd love to work on some of the new stuff. So we'll see what happens there. But uh, you know, the TV things that they're doing. But no, uh, never get. I never. I never get to go on the set. Now, if they're talking about doing a Gremlins three, and if they do, and they call me to work on that, I'm going to insist that I get to come hang out on the set. <laughs> I want to, I want to see the background yeah. gremlin where it's like all the gremlins and then they just paint you green and put some ears on you and you get to actually <laughs> be on the set there. with them. You know, they, they won't, they won't pay you to That'd talk though. Fun. You'll just have to, you'll just sit, sit back no. there and just walla walla. No, <laughs> so actually but, I think it would be pretty cool to be an extra. I mean, to be an extra in gremlins three and, and do the voices for the gremlins, but maybe be a patron at a bar or something, sitting at a bar, falling off the bar stool or who knows. <laughs> well, but, you, yeah, I, I'd think, love to see you yeah, as that. a shopkeeper or something, they come in and talk to you for a second or, or, uh, yeah. I, I still, well, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm still campaigning for the, uh, the new Disney plus show, like salacious, salacious B crumb, you oh. know, I was like, I want to see the, <laughs> so, you know, salacious B crumbs whole series on, on Disney plus where he fights giants right. and, and, and you know gets his cheese and watches the three stooges and, yeah he also fell in <laughs> he also you fell know, into the sarlacc pit you know after the at the after the, the barge blew right. up he, he fell into the sarlacc pit and him and boba fett go on an adventure so anyways right. uh so oh uh well mark <laughs> mark thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for for coming on die of all shrimp it's been such a blast getting to talk with you man josh this has been great you're a lot of fun this was fun thank you <laughs> thanks for enjoyed sure. it yeah, I mean, for everyone watching out there, if you want to support this channel, uh, Diabolic Shrimp, I interview interesting and famous people from around the world. Uh, you know, hit hit all the buttons around here, the like, subscribe, ding that bell for noties. Uh, if you want to support me as as an author, uh, uh, you can find all my links down there below. We just released another zombie, uh, another zombie apocalypse. So if you love zombies, definitely check that out. But this has been another Diabolic Shrimp. Have a good night.